And welcome back to day two of digital therapy. It's great to be back. Um, great to see some familiar faces in the chat. My name is Alice. I am your host, as well as a artist and muralist based in the SF Bay area. And this week, I'm really excited to be bringing on a special guest. Um, please welcome Tiffany Tan. Welcome, Tiffany. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome. welcome back for day two of our breakfast foods uh, doodle adventure. So if you're new to the stream, um, basically the way this works is doodle therapy is an interactive show here on Adobe Live. We're on every other week at this time on Wednesdays and Thursdays from three to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and every week we bring on a special guest. We learn from them. We chat with them about life, their journey. Um, hang out. And we also have a weekly doodle prompt that is related to something that the guest is interested in. So this week we are drawing breakfast food characters together. And if you're watching this, regardless of if you're a beginner, if you are an experienced drawer um, or your age or skill level, you know, you're totally invited to draw along with us and have some fun doodling breakfast food characters. Um, if you're joining us live in the feel, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat, um, share your name, you can share where you're from. And we always have a random question of the day. So our random question of the day is, do you have a pet? And if so, tell us about your pet. And if you don't, um, but you want to have a pet, uh, tell us what kind of pet that you would want to have. So I've got my little pup Mochi here. <laughs> next to me who I'll introduce in a sec. Um, but yeah, and so welcome into Glenn, Sam, Lena, and Anne Alonso, who was on our stream a couple weeks ago. Um, it's great to have you all with us. So um, I'm gonna hop on over here to uh, a fun little page with some of Tiffany's beautiful drawings on it. Tiffany, do you mind introducing yourself? Um, telling us a little bit about yourself and, you know, what you're about. Hi, so my name is Tiffany and I'm also known as Apple Cheeks. I'm currently self-employed, so I'm doing a lot of just like client work, running my own small business, doing Patreon stuff. And I also have a YouTube channel where I do studio vlogs. And yeah, that's essentially what I do. Um, I would describe my work as being really colorful and very... Um, I guess cute. Uh, I usually don't like to describe myself as cute, but that's what I hear from other people. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Yeah, cute is awesome. Your work is like so <laughs> like whimsical and warm and sweet to me. Thank um, you. Do you have a pet? Or if you don't have pet, what kind of pet? Pets, plural, do you potentially mm. want to get someday? So, so I currently don't have any pets, but I've had a few pets growing up and um, I had like hamsters, I had a dog, a lot of fish and bunnies. Um, but if I can wow. have a pet right now, yeah, I had a lot of different pets. Um, but if I can have a pet right now, I think I would really want a dog, but I don't think I'm ready for a dog. So maybe not yet. Dogs are, a, yeah, dogs are a big commitment. Um, do you have any ideas for a name for your dog? I don't, because I feel like I name things based off of like what they look like. So mm -hmm. I don't really have mm -hmm. an image of like what kind of dog I would want. But yeah, I usually name them on the spot when I see them. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, well, if I visit you guys in um, Las Vegas later in the summer, you can ha hang out with my dog, Mochi. Yes, I might just steal yeah. Mochi. Mochi just yeah. might become my dog. 
Yeah. So um, to answer the question on my end, um, so I already introduced myself as an artist. I'm based in the San Francisco Bay Area. I was just in Taipei recently and I came back. Um, I do have a dog. Her name is Mochi. There she is. Hi, Mochi. Um, and she's a small miniature pincher. She's very cat-like. Um, she's not really like a traditional, like playful dog that's like running around. Okay, she wants to, she wants to go back to her, to her room now. Um, yeah, she she's very playful though. Once she gets to warm up with you, and she's in a lot of my illustrations actually, like right above my head in this uh, cityscape one. She's running with me um, in her little plaid coat. So, oh, her name is Mochi, like um, the Japanese. Uh, treat like a M O C H I. So, um, Lena Gonzalez says they have a Chihuahua named Rooney, and he's sitting on their lap. Um, Sharif Simmons says they have two Dalmatian doggos. Cute. Glenn has plants. Plants that are their pets. They're a film editor. Cool. Yeah, pl- you know, plants are plants require a lot of work too. Um, and Anne has a lovely Chihuahua Yorkie mix named Snickers, and they're an actual sweetheart. Oh yeah, thanks, thanks, Glenn. So uh, yeah, that's that's a I think fun way to you know learn about someone in their life is to you know hear about their beloved furry animals. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna jump into the drawing part of the stream. So um, like I mentioned, every week we're on we have a doodle prompt. Um, this week we are drawing breakfast food characters together, um, and if you're not sure what that means, um, you know. I actually put together a little mood board over here of a couple of examples of cute breakfast food characters. So we have some lovely illustrations from Tiffany's Instagram um, from this series that she's doing to promote her new jewelry line. And a lot of the characters are, I mean, a lot of the food items, you know, are these like playful characters. Um, There's also this cute character called Gudetama, which is this Sanrio character who is an egg who um, is the egg yolk. And then they like use the egg whites as a blanket. So I think that's really cute. Um, and also I recently went to the Rila Kuma cafe, which is this San X bear. And although these are real food items, I think they're cool examples of how you can turn, uh, food items into characters and give them a little bit of that life. Um, as well as, you know, a little bit of a story. So we're going to be, um, drawing, some food characters together. And to start off, you know, although we've already begun sketching, um, I figured we'd spend the first five or so minutes just with a doodle warm up. Uh, we're going to be just sketching out some simple breakfast food characters together. So if you'd like to join along, feel free to grab a notebook and a pen and start drawing some uh, breakfast foods with us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Chasley says that they love Gudetama. Yes, I think it's so. Uh, cl- cute of an idea. So uh, yeah, what are some things that you are thinking of um, sketching, Tiffany? Um, I wanted to draw a waffle because I just, I kind of really like waffles and I feel like there's so much potential in making every part of the waffle a character. So I actually have like this waffle sticker where the whipped cream is the character on top. Um, Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, and it's kind of like interacting together because like if you have strawberries or blueberries, they're all just kind of like rolling around. Kind of like your, I think you drew some strawberries yesterday, um, but kind of like Oh, that. yeah. Yeah, I drew these. Um, oh, I think I got rid of the page, but I drew these strawberries and uh, these, these grapes and uh, one of them was rolling away and the other ones were very concerned about. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you're drawing these characters, how do you go about thinking of how to design them? So it's not like you're just drawing something and like sticking a smiley on it. Like, I feel like your characters have a lot of depth and there's there's usually some like funny narrative happening. So how do you go about like planning that? I feel like I don't really plan my work that much. A lot of it is um, either like stream of consciousness, like I just draw whatever I think of first or I really like to use reference photos, but stylize it in a way that makes it into mine. Um, But as for planning, I'm not really usually the type to plan 
I guess, what a character looks like. It's just a lot of sketchbooking and experimentation, usually. Hmm. That makes sense. Oh, Anne says that your new jewelry line is wonderful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, me and Stephanie worked like really hard on that. So we're kind of happy with how everything came out at the end. Do you mind telling us a little bit about your jewelry line and like that whole process, how <clears throat> how it came together? Um, yeah, so Stephanie is the founder of Keston, which is the jewelry brand that worked with me on, um, I guess, making that collection come alive. And she is also the jewelry designer. So she's the one that actually went in and designed the charms. She made like the CAD mock-ups as well as just like contacting the manufacturers and stuff like that. Um, wow. And Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. You're welcome. She's like amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, she pretty much like contacted me. We finalized like a theme, which was a picnic theme. So we wanted to do like um, a lot of fruits incorporated into picnic scenes. Um, and I tried to do like, I tried to make each print that came with the charm into like a different type of picnic that I would see. So like there's one where there's like a bottle of wine with, I think there's like grapes and a picnic basket. So that's like the more mature type of picnicking um, versus like, I also had an idea mm. for like a juice box where it's like more of a, a children's picnic so I kind of like the idea of like um, all the different picnics that you can go on depending on like mm. what your personality is or what you enjoy most um, yeah, yeah. Um, Anne wants to know how did you two come together to make this collaboration happen um, so usually for collaborations I'm reached out by a company so Stephanie reached out to me first and asked me if I wanted to do it. <clears throat> um, how did they, how did your collaboration, collaborators usually find you? Is it through word of mouth, social media? Um, mm. um, I think friends? they usually find me from my Instagram, I would say, and either that or my YouTube channel. And they, yeah, I don't think they really, it's not like a, like a friend told them or anything, but more so of um, just stumbling across my work online. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. Oh, Chasley says they love the difference in each of our, each of their art our art styles. Cool. Oh, and Anne says bring back ju juice boxes for adults. I totally agree. Oh, yeah. I was just in Taipei where there are so many different types of drinks. Um, you know, so colorful. Those like Asian vending machines. Um, if, if, uh, if any of you are familiar and there's so many different types of like sweet drinks, fruity drinks. Um, so I definitely am missing that quite a bit. I love their drinks. Like they have literally every type of drink in the world. Um, and it always yeah. tastes so much better over there. Yeah. I literally brought back some Pokari sweat, which is this like, uh, it's like Gatorade kind of. Because I think the they do have Pokari sweat in the States, but the bottle is yeah. not as cute. It's like this weird, like warped looking bottle. So. Wait, isn't gotta, there a specific uh, Supao? Have you ever had Supao? Uh, no, what's that? It's like a similar drink, except it's, um, it's like green and blue. And it comes in like a tin can. It's a Taiwanese kind of Gatorade. Similar to oh. the drink you were talking about, yeah. I have never had that before, um, but I would love to great. to try. Yeah, you know, we could talk about our favorite snacks too. I'm always, always down. Although that might make me a little mm. hungry. I brought back like, um, every time I'd go out um, in tai Taipei for like groceries and stuff, I would just like start to stockpile a little bit of like some interesting snack that I saw. So I'd grab, you know, a mango pocky here and like a, you know those koala treats with like cream inside? I'd grab a birthday cake flavored one of those. And then, um, and then so by the end of it, I had like a ton of snacks to bring back. And I'm trying to ration those to share with friends here. I, hmm. I like a lot of Asian snacks, but I feel like I eat everything 
So I don't remember the names of any of the snacks, but I like the shrimp chips a lot, actually. That's like oh, one yeah. of my childhood favorites. Yeah, those are pretty yeah. good. Those are the best. <clears throat> awesome. So, you know, we've done a little bit of um, warm up sketches. Um, I love, I love your, <laughs> is it a melting uh, uh, egg? Egg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So cute. Oh, I love your strawberry, um, your strawberry, uh, cool guy strawberry. <laughs> cool guy. Um, yeah. I drew a sleepy soup dumpling and a really cool strawberry <gasps> juice box. It's like, Soup Yo. dumpling. So good. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, you know, if you are also interested in drawing along and um, creating a breakfast food item of yourself, this kind of shows the simple, really stream of conscious, like uh, Tiffany mentioned, um, doodling style of like, just, you know, thinking about what character what breakfast food you want to draw and then making it a fun character um and if you'd like to draw along please feel free to do so and you can also um share it on social media and tag me at i'm at by alice lee you can also tag um tiffany at apple.cheeks and it's really fun to see everyone's doodles so um yeah feel free to join along too uh we're gonna switch into the um you know, full like painting drawing part of the stream now. Um, so if you watched our stream yesterday, you'll know that we started on our fuller illustration pieces. And now um, we're more in the coloring part of the process. Um, Tiffany, do you mind telling us a little bit about your piece and where you are? What are your like next steps? What are you thinking about when you're um, at this point usually? Yeah, so um, I have a lot going on on my piece right now. I have like walking strawberries. I've been really into like drawing strawberry or just any character with just legs. I think it's really cute how they're just kind of like balancing and like toppling over all over the place. Um, yeah, I have <laughs> I have a toast with a heart cut out with an egg cracked in the center of it because I saw it on Pinterest and I thought that was like the cutest way to make breakfast is by like cutting yes. out the section and yeah yes. i thought that was cute um those are yeah, really cute uh what else is happening there's like a frog in a mug i was trying to do the like do you know how there's like some coffees that have like the 3d artwork with the foam on top of it yeah yeah the like the latte yeah. art yeah something like that so i was trying to make that um He's just chilling in a cup. Uh, I love yeah, it. And I'm just coloring. This, oh, uh, I was going to say this unrelated, but what you said reminded me of it um, with the foam. There's this like really cool soap dispenser in Japan where like when you press on it, it like foams up into your hand and it delivers like a flower shaped foam because you like press it, it and the foam comes out. And I really want to get one of those. That's like very trendy on TikTok. I've seen it everywhere. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. It's gone mainstream. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Chasley says the Sakura Blossom soap. Yes. Exactly that. Um, so I'm curious uh, to ask Tiffany, when it comes to your work, you were kind of talking about it yesterday where you have a Patreon as well as a shop and vlog and um, Instagram. Uh, how do you view the balance of your time with all of these things? Like, especially with client work, do you um, feel like you do an equal amount of client work and personal work? Like, how do you go about assessing that um, and figuring out the mix to, to have in your, mm. your work? So a lot of the times when I'm doing or when I'm planning my schedule, I realized that I can't focus on like shop updates or making new products if I have client work going on at the same time. So yeah. I think these days I try to focus on one at a time um, alongside like YouTube and Patreon because that's a monthly thing that goes on every month. Um, but I will choose like for a specific month if I'm doing a lot of client work, I just won't do a shop update or- I see. I, if I don't get client work for an entire month, I'll just do a shop update. 
and that's like an easy way of like managing my time better. Yeah, that's cool. That's、um, very clever. So you have like a、um, like plans based on、um, how much of one that you you have on on your plate. Yeah, because if I did everything in one month, I think I would go insane. I used to do that, and it was not a fun experience for me. Hmm, that makes sense. Yeah, that's that's a really interesting way to think about it.、Um, and hope if there's anyone else in the view who are, if there's anyone else who's watching who、um, also does a lot of like client work and then like what I call personally initiated work, but it could be like running a shop or、um, running a vlog. Patreons,、um, stuff like that, and you also have a similar or different way of of approaching it. Feel free to let us let us know.、Um, Neil Nakahodo wants to know how do you avoid burnout when working full time at home. That's a great question, Neil, and、uh, even more so relevant, I think, because because of the last year where we were all working from home. I think for me. Um, I learned this from the pandemic, but like, you have to find something outside of work to do、um, to either inspire you and give you something to make work about, or just like、yeah. to take a break from. Because if you're constantly just at your desk drawing all day, of course you're going to burn out, and it's not going to feel great, and it's going to take so much longer to bounce back. But for like example, like what I do right now. Um, I'm working in like a co-working office space, so we usually all work the same times, and then at the end of the day, we'll do something fun, whether it's like exercising together, swimming, or get dinner together, or just talk. And just by like having these experiences outside of work, it it gives like life more of a purpose. I feel like than just like constantly slaving away at the computer.、Um, yeah. yeah, but I can totally relate.、Me. Yeah, I think、um, the whole process of living in a house with a lot of people is actually a really、uh, good strategy if you're especially introverted or if you tend to get sucked into your work, because you automatically have a social、um, like safety net. Basically, you just walk out your door、yeah. and there's someone doing something. Oh, we're getting a lot of great questions in the chat.、Um, Chazzy wants to know. What would you say is the best way to overcome heavy art block, or maybe to like reframe it?、Um, since I think that art block and art motivation, all of these things are so like personal to each person, so it can be hard sometimes to give like general advice. So I would like flip it and ask: When you personally have experienced art block, what have been things that specifically worked for you? That might work for other people, but worked for your experience. Hmm. I have a lot of different experiences with art block. I feel like,、um, and every time it's a little bit different. But I've narrowed it down to it being mainly like my mental health.、Um, a lot of the times when I have art block, it's usually when I'm feeling really bad about myself, whether it's related to my work or not.、Um, so I think it's really important to eat properly and exercise, get good amounts of sleep. You know. Um, and usually, like when I feel healthier and feel better about myself, it kind of carries into my work as well. And then I don't have art block anymore. But also, sometimes it's more of just like、um, being stuck in one place for too long and、um, just not being able to be inspired by anything. So maybe going out to museums or to like thrift shops. Or wherever it takes for you to get inspired to make work. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense.、Um, <clears throat> and if anyone else has thoughts on how they've overcome, overcame art block in the past, definitely let us know in the chat. I think for me,、um, <clears throat> like you, it also has varied from time to time,、um, from instance to instance. The connective thread that I've observed. Through all of these experiences, is that there's usually some deeper,、uh, you know, driver behind this art block. So,、mm -hmm. for example, when I was younger, my the the root source of the art block would be fear, fear of、mm -hmm. trying, fear of putting myself out there, fear of 
being vulnerable and um, like daring to give it a shot, give this art thing a shot. Um, and so the way to work on my art block was therefore uh, had to start with um, addressing that fear and like wondering why, why that was, I felt that way and like working on my confidence. Um, and once I worked on that, then it became a lot less daunting and I was a lot less um, stuck. So hopefully that's, that's uh, helpful. Also, you know, just talking to friends sometimes can be very mm -hmm. helpful. Just doing random things. Glenn Lambert says um, they also recommend driving around and looking at the art in your city. Oh my gosh, yeah, I yes. think um, I think going to museums is actually a really cool way to um, get over that because you when you go to museums, it's actually really like awe inspiring to just look at the art and think like, oh, my gosh, this piece of art like is older than me. Like somebody mm -hmm. sat down and like carved this vase, you know, in the 1500s or whatever. And then this vase like was survived and like you know was buried under rubble and then it was like excavated or whatever and now it's like here and now I'm looking at it and I also you know do art too but in my own way and I think it makes me feel like the stakes are not as high if that makes sense like it's like yeah. oh I'm just like I'm just making art and like art has come before me and art will come after me like it's not a big deal um you know yeah, so hopefully that I, that uh, is helpful. Have you ever been to Italy? Oh, I went to Italy once, actually. Um, it was to study typography there. Ooh, because I, I went there for a study abroad trip, too, and there was, like, so much art just laying around, and they treat yeah. the art there like it's nothing. Like, people literally are, like, sitting on it or, like, putting their cups on it because they just have so much history there and like so much art that it's just like there like you can find a super old piece of artwork just laying on the side of the street which I always found really insane yeah I loved um I loved my experience in Italy I actually was in Rome so I, it was also like a school study abroad program where we were studying the typ typography of the city and because the city of Rome is like so old and there's so much just like art history on the streets. Like you just like look around, you'll see, um, you'll see like the imprint of where a shop sign used to be. And like maybe the sun, you know, shined on it in a certain way so that you can see where like the old block letters were. And then you can study like that typography from like, you know, the shop that was there like hundreds of years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And it was really inspiring to be in such a, historical city, it made me realize that living in the U.S., um, since the U.S. is such a relatively younger country, uh, we just don't have a, as much of this like history just on the streets because we're, we're younger uh, and our, yeah. the buildings are a lot newer. And so it made me appreciate like these super old buildings that, you know, you see when you are in Europe or Asia, like a lot more. Um, oh, Chasley said that they recently had an art block that stumped them for almost a month. And by watching other artists like Tiffany on YouTube and many other amazing creators, it helped them to feel more inspired. That's Aww. awesome. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, also, as a note, if you um, have a preferred pronoun that you'd prefer me to address you as, um, please feel free to indicate that in your response as well in the chat. Oops. Cool. I think I'm done with my sleeping piece of toast. So I will move on wow. <clears throat> to the I'm tomatoes. I wish I was that relaxed. I want to be that piece of toast right now. Oh yeah. I feel like I am that piece of toast because I am still a little jet lagged from my trip and I took an extremely long nap slash sleep uh, before this, so. Actually, I'm gonna draw this jello cake. 
because why not? Ooh, Jello cakes. Jello I haven't cake. had Jello since like I haven't had Jello for years. Kind of oh really? Now. Yeah. Jello's my favorite. I was in um so since I was in Taipei, the convenience stores are like everywhere, and they're full of amazing food. So <laughs> my routine would be I'd get a um, orange and lime Jello from Seven Eleven, and I would eat that every day. Uh, I'm going to fly not- to Taiwan soon just to go eat the food. I know, I know, me too. I miss Taiwan so much. Um, earlier, you were talking about having hobbies outside of your job. So I'm curious, like, what are some things that you do for fun that aren't like related to your work? Um, I do not really have a lot of hobbies. I have to admit, but um, things like journaling or having a lot of house plants or sometimes like Animal Crossing, those were the things that kept me. Busy、um, before I met a bunch of friends out here in Vegas, so I still have a lot of house plants. Except sometimes because I stay over at、um, this house for so long, I go home and my plants are on the verge of just death. So oh no, I'm not doing a great job at doing that.、Um, yeah, you? could you bring them to your new house? Oh yeah, I can definitely、house? do that.、Um, I will have to when I. End up moving here, but for now, I I need to take care of them somehow. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you have yeah, any hobbies on me, the side? Oh, sorry. Oh yeah,、um, all good. I think for me,、um, one hobby I've recently gotten into、uh, has been playing video games for fun. So I actually think this is because of my boyfriend's influence, who's here helping me、uh, run the the tech side of the stream.、Um, but he's all he's into video games, and I didn't used to be into video games before we started dating. But、um, especially since quarantine, I've just gotten into like playing games on the Switch. So we recently finished playing Pokemon, the、um, the Let's Go. Um, let's go、uh, game. So I'm about a few years late to that one, but you know, finished it nonetheless. And I also saw that、um, Nintendo is having some kind of announcement day in June, and so I hope that they announce Breath of the Wild too, because that would be amazing. And I got obsessed with that game、uh, during quarantine. I loved running around in that game. It's so、pretty. yeah, me too. It's so fun. I love、um, doing the troll, troll kind of things. Like you can chuck these bombs at giants, but they do like one HP of damage, and the,、uh, giants、What? have like the most HP because there are these like really lightweight bombs that like Link has.、Um, so I like to stand on like a tall, like cliff or something, and then just throw the bombs at the giant, and then it takes like a hundred bombs, and <laughs> but the giant can't get at you because、wow. you're. You're on on top of a tree, so.、Um, oh, Char- Chasley asked a great question,、uh, which came also at the end of our stream yesterday.、Um, do, do we have a preferred color palette with our drawings?、Um, and we we sort of started answering this question, but、uh, do you mind sharing, Tiffany? Um. Yeah. So. I don't really have a preferred.、Mm, actually, no. I, I kind of do. I think it's more of like specific colors. So as I was saying yesterday, like when I typically draw like leafy things that involve green, I prefer more of like a bluish green over like a pure green. So I do make、mm. like subtle changes in my colors based off of just like preference of what I like.、Um, but as for like choosing color palettes, I'm not usually the the type to like plan out what colors I'm using unless it's like a specific. Color palette that like a client wants me to use. I see. Yeah, that makes sense.、Um, yeah, for me, it's also similarly intuitive. I feel like I definitely have my favorites. For example, for a while,、um, 
I like, for example, my favorite color palette that I just naturally fall into a lot is this blue, purple, pink gradient. So it's in a lot of the Doodle Therapy branding. Like you can kind of see it around mm. on the screen. Uh, and I'll, I'll also hop on over. Like if you look at my above work, like it's all in that, that, um, that palette. And I felt really bad um, at first because I was like, oh no, like I'm, all my work is just in this color palette. Um, but then I saw a tweet that was like, don't refer refer to your natural strengths as crutches. And then I was like, yeah, I just gonna own it. Like, I just really like these colors and yeah. um, they really appeal to me when I see them out in the wild, uh, in other products or in nature. So I'm just gonna like own it. And I really like this, this uh, warm blue to peachy pink gradient. That's um, also like sometimes how people recognize artists is through their color palette and not necessarily like their style or their voice, but some artists yeah. mainly use the same colors for that reason. Yeah, that that's totally true. Um, yeah, and I think also, you know, during quarantine, I try to work on my color like theory understanding since I don't really have a technical art background. A lot of the times I was just like, you know, checking together whatever colors just like looked good to me. Um, but sometimes I just wouldn't really know why. And having understanding of like, oh, I chose these colors because they're like from a warmer palette and or like adding in this blue looks weird because it's like a cooler blue. But my whole palette is like warm and it doesn't make sense for this thing to just be like randomly blue, um, blue, blue. That that's that's also gone a long way. Um, oh, Chazzy has, also has a great question. Um, once again, they want to know any tips for digital paintings. It's one of their favorite mediums um, and they always enjoy learning more techniques and tips. Um, I would ask a follow up, which is what apps are you using? Because I think sometimes it depends on the software in addition to just the, the medium of digital painting. Oh, wait, are you asking Chasley? Yeah, yeah. Or, That's oh, okay. If you have specifics. <laughs> but if you have um, general tips as well, feel free to share them. Well, I don't really know. Okay. I think like the best tip is it's not a, it's not really a tip, but more of just like brutal honesty. But I feel like if you just, um, spend time learning like all the shortcuts it makes things go a lot faster and a lot easier and I think you want to yeah. treat digital tools like as if you're learning another traditional medium like for example watercolor you want it to feel so like natural and intuitive to the point where you're not thinking about the technical aspects of it and you're just kind of drawing yeah totally um, that makes a lot of sense Chasley says they tend to use Procreate on their iPad and Adobe Photoshop for bigger projects. Yeah, so I think like kind of what, um, you know, Tiffany was saying, with just knowing the software that you're using as like an, an extension of the medium. So for example, I can tell you that in Photoshop, I utilize shortcuts like a lot and I even customize my own shortcuts. So that way I'm not <clears throat> thinking a lot about like, oh, how do I like duplicate this and flip it horizontally? You know, I have a shortcut for that. Um, and it, it's to the point where like my left hand is just as active as my right hand. My right hand is drawing, but then my left hand is like pressing the buttons on the, the keyboard. Wow, I want to get to that level. Do you, do you feel like you also use shortcuts in your work? Um, I... I use like keyboard shortcuts, but I feel like I'm not that fast at like Photoshop anymore because I haven't used uh. it to draw for a long time. Yeah. I used to use it a lot when I was younger, so I was definitely faster back then. Um, but I feel like if I picked it up again, I'll be able to figure it out pretty fast. It's just the iPad is just so much more convenient these days to draw on. Yeah, I totally agree. 
I, for example, on my flight back home from Taipei, which was a 10 hour flight, I spent almost the whole time like working on a project, like on the flight with my iPad, which wow. is not something that I could previously do. Like, I think even five years ago, do we have, yeah. do we have iPad pencil back then? Well, it's not something I was doing five years ago. Um, I don't think so. Yeah. I think maybe like what well, almost five years, maybe like four years ago. I remember I got mine in college and I graduated two years ago. So about four or five years ago, maybe. Hmm. It was definitely a game changer. <laughs> like I couldn't stop drawing for a long time after I bought my first iPad. Yeah. Same. I think the pencil and screen combo really change the game for me like it feels more intuitive mm -hmm. um and another like photoshop tip is uh if i want to switch the colors i'll use this like hue and saturation panel and i'll just uh use that to adjust the colors like right now i'm working on these uh strawberry or no they're tomatoes um but i might make them strawberries but I, they seem kind of too bright to me so i'm just like going around and making it a little bit less like deep red. Maybe I'll make them orange. So they're more aligned with the piece of toast. Maybe these are tangerines. Do you like citrusy fruits? Yeah, I love, love citrusy fruits. Love, love the whole uh, family. And I know I keep talking about Taiwan, but that's just because I just got back. But um, the fruits in Taiwan slash greater Asia are like so good. They're so tangy because the soil and the like tropical environment is just really different from from uh, the u.s so yeah. definitely love like pineapples um i love oranges cherries i think it's like cherry season now Ooh. i remember um wax apples are from taiwan oh yeah uh, those are so apples. good yeah, yeah, they're so sweet there. Um, also, like long, long yen, like uh, dragon eye, dragon's eye. Oh, dragon fruits. Yeah. Mm, no, it's like the um, pink one? it's kind of like lychee, where it's like really small, and there's like a black seed in the center of like this white oh. fleshy fruit part. Um, so that's why they call it a dragon's eye because it kind of looks like an eyeball. Oh, that's, I love it's it. That's really so good. like mythological. I <laughs> love it. Um, you know, something that I always like to ask guests on the stream, um, so I'd love to ask you now is what are some of your goals and dreams when it comes to your work hmm. or, and life in well, general? Life in general. Well, yeah, when don't I want to just confine it to. Hmm. When I was younger, so by younger, I mean like maybe before college, um, I think my goal was to be happy. And um, obviously that has shifted a lot since I grew up and understood that happiness isn't something that you can attain and consistently have all the time. Um, mm. So now oh, I think my goal, yeah, because you always have to feel kind of like the sad bits in life. I feel like in order to feel the happiness. And um, so my goal isn't happiness anymore, obviously, but I think now it's more of just like um, freedom and independence and being able to do what I love doing without anyone stopping me or restricting me. Um, and I think that is my new happiness. Mm, those are great goals. Thanks for sharing that with us. Of course. Yeah, I think my goal, my um, perception of happiness has also changed a lot over the years. I, I too used to view happiness as like a, a like a level that you hit, you know, and then yeah. you're like there. But I actually think it's more of a, for me at least, it's a sense of comfort within myself so even if mm. my surface level situation isn't happy I can be content with myself and um, I I feel like I've modeled this off of, off of 
certain friends and even like doodle therapy guests who I've met who seem to have that core sense of happiness and comfort within themselves. Um, it, it seems similar. It seems tied to um, the feeling of confidence to me, actually. It's like a, a feeling of like security within yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and and in that sense, it also seems tied to your other goal of like independence. Um, and uh, what's 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 the word for it? Like you can you you're like sort of in in control of your destiny. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of my that's that's where my uh, sense of happiness has like settled upon. Wow, that's a really good one. I feel like that's also something that I've realized more so recently, like just being able to be satisfied with yourself. Um, it's a never-ending goal to reach. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'd love to hear if anyone else feels like sharing their goals and dreams in the chat. Feel free to do so as well. I love how your, um, like your two heart side by side characters turned out with your, um, post. Yeah. This one is jam and this one is an egg. Cute. (laughs) I love it. Thank you. I love your jello. Oh, thank you. I want to like swim inside of your (laughs) jello. Oh yeah. Maybe I should have a, some, something here. Um, do you ever give your characters names or do you have like recurring characters? Um, I don't really give them names, but there is a, mm, there's one name that keeps coming back in my head, which is like a play on strawberries and babies. So I call it straw babies and it's just a lot of like really small strawberries together. That's really cute. Mm -hmm. I'm really bad at making names, so I feel like I usually leave naming up to other people. Um, yeah, I think we can come up yeah, with a name I'm... for you. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. Yeah, feel free to shout out any strawberry names. Um, oh, um, Emily uh, is sharing one of their goals, which is to open an Etsy store very inspired by apple cheeks. That's so sweet. That's awesome. Aww. Thanks for sharing. I hope you open your shop soon. That would be, I feel like um, launching a shop is definitely like so fun. And if I could go back in time, I would want to go back to the first day that I launched my store and just like feel that feeling again. Yeah. Wow. I, so this is kind of uh, vulnerable and silly to share, but like I have been, saying that I'll launch my shop for a long time, but for some reason I've like held off on just hitting the launch button. Like I literally have everything set up. Um, I have my like website set up. I even um, started working with a fulfillment partner because uh, previously the reason why my shop was down was that like, I just could never keep up and it was like becoming really draining to assemble everything and like package it. And yeah. I'd always be like scared of like, oh, what if I miss uh, pack someone's package or um, like mispack the pin or something and it gets damaged. So I I literally have it all at my like fulfillment partner's like office, but I just like for like a month now, I like have been really hesitant to just press the like launch button and I'm not sure why. I think there's like a deeper reason why, kind of like what we were saying mm-hmm. earlier about art block. Like there's some like fear or there's something there but I've, so it's, it's cool to hear you say that you miss those first days. Cause I'm, I'm sitting here like kind of apprehensive about those first, first days of my relaunch, it, I guess. You should do it. It's, it's honestly like the best feeling ever. Cause it's kind of like all your hard work, um, that you've worked, you've been working on for so long and you're finally able to share it with the world. It's like, I don't think I could trade that feeling for anything else. Hmm. 
Okay, maybe, yeah. I have to definitely revisit this and examine, but examine this feeling. no pressure. Yeah, it's no pressure. It's really, like, really hard to actually just do it, but... <sighs> I'm so happy though. I want I want to see everyone's stores. Yeah, Chasley says uh, they also recently opened their own Etsy shop earlier this year and started selling their art. And now their goal is to grow as an illustrator. What a wonderful goal! Yes, that is a great goal. So you know we're almost reaching the end of our stream. We've got about. Um, five minutes left. So I do want to just say thanks to everyone for joining us. And also thanks to Tiffany, AKA Apple Cheeks for joining us and also inspiring so many people in the chat. Oh, thank you for uh, reaching out to hosts because like this was so fun and I never thought I would be live streaming. So thank you. Yeah, it is fun. Um, and I think we've, um, you know, shouted out Tiffany's links and her, um, her social media in the chat several times. Thanks to Sam, our awesome mod. But if you want to check out um, Tiffany's work uh, and even possibly see this piece, um, you know, no pressure, though, uh, <laughs> feel free to check her out at at Apple dot cheeks. And then um, your Twitter is Tiffany Tan at Tiffany Tan art. I think while you're at um, Tiffany's page, if you're checking it out, you should also look at her new jewelry launch, which is like the cutest thing ever. Um, Thank you. It's like, like, like a bee shaped necklace, you know, or like a strawberry piece of jewelry. Like it's, it's super cute. Um, and yeah, it's a great idea. So. I love it. Do you mind um, maybe zooming out on your piece so we could spend the last like few minutes taking a look at how far you, we each got? So yeah, your piece looks so cute. I mean, you got really far, um, especially considering that you came into it this with a black and white sketch and over the last two days you've been coloring. You wait, but you're already like done shading and everything on yours. I oh yeah, understand. but I think that's you draw just, pretty fast too. I think my process is more like I I do little clumps of it mm. at a time, and then I let that determine. And I'm also not um, as tight when it comes to my composition. Like I Whoa. I like to move things things around a bit. So um, yeah, sometimes that means I'm like faster in the beginning, but then like slower at the end. Um, mm. But yeah, I love I love how you laid yours out, and I also love the colors that you chose. Thank you. Yeah. If um, any of y'all ended up creating some breakfast food characters, feel free to share them with us. Um, Tiffany's at apple.cheeks and I'm at by Alice Lee. And it, it's always fun to, you know, see people's doodles, whether they are sketches or finished pieces. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to our Discord. So if you um, are looking for a creative community that, you know, uh, is really welcoming and we also love um, celebrating the cuteness of life and aesthetics, feel free to join us at creativecuties.net. It's a really uh, friendly bunch. So um, yeah, Tiffany, thanks for joining us over the, the last two days. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm sad. This is the end of our live stream. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking like what um, if it would be helpful to like maybe try to pitch doing like two weeks in a row to Adobe um, just to get more FaceTime with the viewer, uh, with the um, the guest. But yeah, so far it's just one week and we'll be back on in another two weeks on uh, June 16th to 17th, Wednesday to next, next Wednesday to Thursday. We'll be on with 
Laura Gao, who is a really talented graphic novelist, um, who's also based in Taipei, who I met in Taipei. So that will be um, really fun for them. Definitely check out Laura's work. Um, yeah, so Tiffany, once again, thanks so much for joining us, sharing your insights, for being your inspiring self and just going for your dreams. It's always really encouraging to see. Um, I really enjoyed these last two days and I also can't wait to visit Vegas and potentially do our a mural together. Can't yeah. wait to see you too. And we're going to make a mural here, hopefully. Yeah. On this wall. Yes. <laughs> cool. You guys heard it here first. So um, yeah, have a great day, everyone. And see you in another two weeks. See ya. Bye. Bye.